it's good to speak with you again, Hank. Um, uh, we've done interviews in the past, and um, they're always very interesting. So I'm looking forward today to hearing your topic on, on a new topic called uh, density pricing. Well, before we start, yeah. can you provide a brief background of yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm 44 years in the industry. Started in 1969 as the driver for UPS. Worked there for seven years and ended up a uh, essentially a district manager in sales. And then, of course, the consolidated freightways, the roadway, the ground transport, and the profit lap, which was international freight. So the first maybe 20-something years, I was actively involved in the industry with the carriers. And then in 1987, I started a company called ABN Transportation Services, and we did transportation consulting. So, you know, my background is not only doing the, the manual labor, but the management and mid-level level management, and then less than truckload national, less than truckload regional ground transport, and of course, international freight quality. So like I said, I, I grew up in the industry, which is rare nowadays. It, it's rare to talk to somebody that was actively involved in the industry in 1980 when the Motor Carrier Act came and deregulated the industry. So I had like 10, 10, 12 years of regulated industry and then the remainder where it wasn't regulated. And then of course in 2007, the Surface Transportation Board eliminated all the antitrust ruling the carriers had. So that is, that's why density pricing is here. It just opened up the field for everybody to put their LTL pricing not on national motor freight classification classes, but essentially on how much space did you take up, which if you've done international, most people say, well, we've been, we've been doing that two, three hundred years. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny, especially since the Interstate Commerce Commission in 1897 said pricing should be uh, based on space space that you use, and of course it didn't. The carriers got in there and just more or less uh, took over freight classification. You know, the National Motor Freight Traffic Association, which owns the National Motor Freight Classification, is is um, actually managed by carriers, and very few people know that. And then your Southern Motor Rate Conference, which is the Zara Light product, that's actually maintained by the carriers also. So that 2007 antitrust decision is huge, but it's taken everybody about seven years to figure out how to do it. And of course, uh, UPS Freight started it March of last year, and in the last month or two have just come out full ball and said, hey, give us the length, the width, and the height, give us the weight, and we'll give you a price. No more free classification, which is absolutely incredibly huge. So that's kind of a lot there, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And Are you still with me? My first question is, um, what is density pricing? Density, density pricing. Okay, and, and this is interesting because you bring up something that very few people know. There's a difference between volume pricing and density pricing. Density pricing is length times width times height, and you know, uh, in your weight, you get your pounds per cubic foot. So if you look at the National Motor Freight Classification density chart, there's 18 freight classifications, and it goes from less than one pound per cubic foot, which is class 500, very, very, very expensive, down to class 50, which essentially is 35 to 40 pounds per cubic foot, you can see the big difference. And if you look at a 12 by 12 by 12 package, that you know, actually works out a density of nine pounds a cubic foot, which would be class 100. So you know, the, the package carriers, specifically UPS and FedEx have had that 12 by 12 by 12 last since the 20s. That, that's a standard size package. So if you take it just one step further, both FedEx and UPS said now in the packages, if it's three cubic feet or less, 
you know, you just take the actual weight of it that is in the package. Not anymore. Say January first of 2015. You know, you're going to you're going to pay whatever the density pounds per cubic foot comes out to. It's huge. I mean, it's just you know. And I figure UPS Freight said this. If the package people are going to do it, why don't we? So yeah, it's like that program, uh, American Pickers, that bundle it. And you know, if you if you go to DC Velocity, and if you go to my webpage, you can click on an article uh, I was interviewed that explains a lot of this. And you know, it just kind of tells you this is this is about time we joined the rest of the world, and you know, uh, did something that makes sense. The scarcest commodity a carrier has is space. And that's exactly what UPS and FedEx package said. We're sick of these great big huge cartons. They only get four or five pounds worth of revenue. We're not going to do that anymore. And, and of course, I think that's tremendous. But that's, that's the reason we can, can you, uh, that's the reason that I, I do those things. There you go. That. And then, um, is there any more you could say about the why? Why? Why do we have density pricing? It's it's essentially like I said, the, the package people realize that you know the, the space on their on their vehicles was critical, and you know if you had a ten pound package, that was great. But if you know, I mean, a 12 by 12 by 12 inch carton. But if you had a 12 by 12 by 12 inch carton and you had two pounds, ooh, you know. So one gets by with two pounds worth of revenue, the other gets by with ten. And if you if you realize, a lot of the packages nowadays are are going are residential, and you know that's that's kind of tough, <laughs> you know, to do to do you know, to take that type of a hit. It's, it's, if people are familiar with the classic, there's a thing called an open size package, over 84 inches, less than 130, but you're going to be billed 30 pounds. So if it's 85 inches in, in size and you have 12 pounds in there, no, you're going to be, you're going to pay for 30. And that's been around 15, 20 years. They just took it down to the smaller weight packages now. You know, the stuff you got, you know, a lot of it, of course, is residential internet. So, we, and the other thing is, um, if you watch and listen to a lot of the industry, four or five years ago, Walmart came out and told all of the vendors, make all the packages like 5% less in size. And with 60,000 vendors, you can imagine how much less space it took up, but it also meant a lot less cardboard, so big green issue. And then if you go back like one or two years and you start reading about a company called Staples, and they got a system in there that each carton that comes down is custom built to fit the size of the commodity inside. Huge savings, just huge. So it's 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 something that's been around. It, the, people finally begin to see that this is a really good idea. I mean, you know, the greening, less cardboard, less space, less cost. So, I mean, make it smaller and you pay less. That's pretty simple pricing, isn't it? And how is it done? Just just whatever whatever you have for carton size, just make sure, you know, there's no not a lot of uh, uh, empty space in there. That's it. Just just make the shipment smaller. So instead of a 12 by 12 by 12 carton, maybe you have a 12 by 12 by 10. And that two inches is huge. It's just absolutely huge. Think about 16 million packages a day going through like a UPS system. And you take 10% of the space that they're taking up out of the system. Boy, I tell you what, <laughs> that's, that's tremendous. The same, the same with the LTO carriers. You know, it's you know, there's just so much we can put in a 53 foot trailer, and if you could make it 10 percent less, maybe I get four more shipments on that trailer, 
and if you're doing 30,000 shipments a day, and you know you can take that down by 10 percent, you know, wow, that's 3,000, you know, uh, shipments that fit into you know smaller space. You can once again huge savings. And thanks, Hank, for sharing today on the topic of density pricing. Yeah.